Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard from Mushroom Wonderland. Today I'm not in my regular stomping grounds. I'm actually on the Oregon coast. I can see the beach right behind me where the waves are breaking. Highway 101 running right here. And I'm gonna walk up into this spruce forest and look at what kind of mushrooms are growing here on the Oregon coast. It's a little bit different than where I'm from in the Puget Sound. So let's go into this beautiful forest. We don't have spruce where I live. So let's go see what kind of mushrooms might be growing out here. Mushroom Wonderland. This is a very big forest. These are big trees, man. These spruce trees down here are like just towering and uh, very beautiful. A lot of lily of the valley and a lot of elk droppings everywhere. So an area frequented by the elk, no doubt. Oh, look at that, we got mushrooms right here. Going right off of this old log. And uh, quite a big fruiting. Look at that, the rosy oysterlings. Sky to notice, longicies. So this one called the rosy oysterling because it's got that pinkish color growing on hardwood like this. And these are said to be edible. I've even heard people say they're pretty delicious. This is a nice little fruiting of them, even though they're buggy. But you could, uh, you know, you could pick a nice couple handfuls of these, and there's more growing along this log. And these will often have like an actual little stem on them. This one, not so much. It's very pleurotoid, meaning it looks a lot like an oyster mushroom. But these ones are not a pleurotus, and they have that pinkish color. So the rosy oyster lane common in winter and spring in the northwest didn't expect to really see those growing off of this old hardwood log and right here we have some lbms or some little brown mushrooms you see that i'm going to pick this one so we can get a look at it dark stipe orange colored gills really striate uh, margin so that those are those little lines so this one in the gallerina genus Probably a Gallerina vitiformis or something close to that. Some of these little brown mushrooms, hard to identify to species, but that dark stem screams uh, vitiformis to me. And these are actually a edible section of, or non-toxic section of Gallerina, but some Gallerinas are deadly. So little brown mushrooms, kind of tricky that way. Here's more of this guy to notice. Kind of old though, so that was probably fruiting here a few weeks ago and looking kind of old but I always look at these old logs that are laying down it's a good place to find mushrooms growing oh here's some more mushrooms growing up here on the side of this on the side of this big dead snag and so these guys are actual pleurotus or your oyster mushrooms beautiful young oyster mushrooms or some larger ones growing up there a little bit older same oyster mushrooms that you're going to get um, at the grocery store or whatever. They've got kind of a licorice type smell. And, um, you know, you could easily clone these by just taking a chunk of this and putting it on agar if you want to get fancy. Or you might just throw these in some uh, hardwood sawdust. So you could just get like oak pellets for the Traeger grill. Get them wet. Um, and basically, uh, you know, throw these in there and they might grow on them. And you could grow your own oysters at home. So, you know, pretty common find in the spring. A good edible mushroom. And these, easy to identify. The gills run all the way down to the base. Growing on hardwood. And so, a great one to forage if you're camping or hunting or something like that. Or in a survival situation. These are really good ones. And as I look over here on this log, Ganoderma aplanatum or Ganoderma brownii growing here on this log. The artist conch. Look at this weird formation of it, very ET-like, right? So these are related to reishi, but uh, this one's actually kind of a dead fruiting body. They, they get this white, poor surface under here that can easily be um, you know, damaged or bruised with a stick or something, and you could draw on them. They're beautiful, but look at the formation on that. Kind of looks like a cow patty or something. But that's a mushroom, Ganoderma 
Aplanatum, um, and your Pleurotus austriatus or Pleurotus pulmonarius group, the white oysters. So, nice. Yeah, so if you ever come across clusters of oyster mushrooms that you got to get down out of a tall tree, you can just grab a long stick and just poke it off of there and it'll fall into the bushes and you can grab it. So these are very young. In a few days, they're going to be really prime for the picking. Right now, really young, but, you know, the older they get, the more bugs they're going to get. The bugs just love the oyster mushrooms and so I'm not a big fan of eating worms and stuff but they can be a source of nutrition wow these forests are just beautiful here you can tell the spruce because it has this like flaky bark you see it's like scaly and uh their branches you know pretty much don't start till way up on the tree kind of like Doug fir in that sense um, so it just makes this forest feel really big, really, really big. Oh, look at this nice um, lichen all over the ground. It looks pretty, pretty magical. Right here, I see a mushroom growing here. What do we got? Cool, a lactarius. So lactarius are going to lactate. <laughs> they have a milky-like substance, and when I damage the gills, with my knife like that and you look you can see that whitish milky substance coming out of them candy caps are a popular lactarius that um, grow typically in the fall this one not the candy cap this one is not uh, lactarius rubitus um, this one could be a spicy one so so mushrooms like this, Lactarius, are in the Rus, uh, Russellales, so the family of Russellas and Lactarius. And one way to test them is to give them a little nibble on the edge, see if they're really acrid and peppery, or if they're mild. This will clue you in to edibility. So I take just a little bit, chew it on the very tip of my tongue for about five to ten seconds. Spit it out. And within 10 seconds, you should start feeling it getting really spicy if it's one of the acrid russula or lactarius. Um, I usually can feel it within a few seconds and I don't feel it. And so this one, a mild lactarius and mild lactarius are fine to eat. So this one, an edible lactarius, I'm gonna definitely upload it to iNaturalist. Um, I think this is just uh, some form of a, a mild lactarius that's probably edible. And uh, yeah, we'll keep hiking, but uh, cool finding Lactarius in the spring on the Oregon coast. I'm not finding these on the Kitsap Peninsula where I'm from. So I'm gonna take some nice photos and put it on iNaturalist. Right here, I see some small black cups. So these black cup, cup fungi are pretty pretty uh, common in the spring. And these are an ascomycete and they put off a lot of spores. These ones could be in the Plectania genus. A lot of black cups that come out in the spring in the northwest but these guys are just tiny growing here off of this log but you can find bigger ones that are like a quarter size i passed a couple of them along the way but figured they'd be worth talking about these are, are generally inedible considered inedible but that's a the camera doesn't like to focus on stuff like this let's see come on focus there we go that's pretty cool it's got a little a little bit of orange to it. Oh, this little uh, rattlesnake plantain growing around here. It looks really foreign. Looks like a house plant. All right. Oh, here's a couple of small guild LBMs. These guys. Let's look underneath here. Okay, these are a Mycena. So Mycena, a large genus of uh, small saprophytic mushrooms that just eat decaying matter in the forest. White guild, white spored. It's a big genus of mushrooms, have no clue on the exact species of those, but just two of them growing here. I'm starting to get farther away from the roar of the highway down there and uh, in the ocean. Getting a little higher into these forests. Oh, this is beautiful. Very moss-covered 
And uh, here's a western hemlock that's pretty big. Wow, look at the size of these elk droppings. So, big elk out here. Oh, it would be pretty wild to encounter some elk here in the forest. Oh, look right over here. This one's a common one that grows in the summer up around where I live too. This one, Phaeolus schweinitzii, the dyer's polypore. So, this one used to dye fabric, to dye clothing like wool and silk mainly protein fabrics and this is last year's fruiting body so it's an annual mushroom it's going to fruit once a year and um and then it dies and it just leaves this big crazy wood thing behind here's another one right here so you might be like what the heck is that thing right that's the dyer's polypore so yeah faola schweinitzii at the base of a big stump like this one is perfect and you know early this summer we'll start seeing new ones growing and they are very furry when they first start growing they can look pretty bizarre like you might be like that's a mushroom you know wow look at some of these spruce trees up here they're just tangled up beautiful these forests are really really big here on the coast wow look at this game trail i mean it is like super fresh beautiful little creek valley here these forests are well known for amazing chanterelle and hedgehog patches in the autumn through the winter. And we have some trillium popping up right here. That's a good sign of spring. Always beautiful. Huge healthy sword fern here. These are just beautiful forests. So we might see an elk. We might see Bigfoot. I don't know. We're going to keep scouting around a little more though. Beautiful red belted conchs, Fomitopsis mountiae, growing off of this uh, three inch around old mossy stick. So these are a common brown rot decayer growing in the forests around here. Make it into a lot of my videos. Probably the most common mushroom you're gonna see in the woods of the Pacific Northwest are gonna be these type of conch mushrooms. So Fomitopsis used to be called Panicola, but we have our own species here in the West. This one, Mountie, it's got this red belt. That's why we call it the red belted conch. And underneath, it's going to have a white porous surface. But these are putting off a lot of spores, just doing their little job here in the forest, not bothering nobody. So I think I'm going to leave them alone. And you'll have to take my word for it that they have white pores underneath. Um, right in here, I see a, a mushroom popping up amongst all this duff. Very fragile little stem, but a very umbinant cap. That means a very pointy cap. Dark in the, at the center of the cap and getting to lighter. And a very thin margin, this one. White gilled, this is another Mycena. This one we call Mycena robusta. And uh, it's a really common saprotroph that can grow in big numbers. This one just kind of growing alone, but I've seen just a couple of them speckled around. So the last vestiges of the really cold weather mushrooms, these ones you usually see in the depths of January and February. And uh, they're still out here though. Growing underneath similar plants that I have on the Kitsap Peninsula. This one, the black evergreen huckleberry, uh, a vaccinium um, ovatum. So yeah, the black huckleberry. And then I also have seen some salal around, but these are good indicators of uh, good mycorrhiza habitat. They, they like to live in these conifer forests of the northwest and wherever you find chanterelles and hedgehog mushroom matsutake you'll often find these the black evergreen huckleberry so we have a few different species of huckleberries in the west and uh, these grow very prolifically right around my area on the Puget Sound and they grow down here on the Oregon coast as well. Thanks. Look at these vine maples, the way they lay over with all this moss. Beautiful. And the wind from the ocean down there has a big influence on how the trees grow around here. And some of these spruce trees out there right on the edge of the coast are just like longer than they are tall, you know. 
Like I think there's a, even a world record for like the longest tree rather than the tallest tree and it's a spruce down here on the Oregon coast. It's, yeah, it's strange. So the wind and the elements down here on the ocean are just relentless and harsh. And so these trees and plants have got to be suited to handle it. And it ends up sometimes looking like these huge crazy tangles of impenetrable trees and brush. That is a direct result of the microclimate down here. Very windy, a lot of fog that comes off of the, uh, you know, they call this the fog belt because the ocean is literally you know, half a mile away. You can probably see, you know, I don't know if you could hear it, but it's loud and it's powerful. It's hard to stand on the edge of the ocean and think you're a big deal. You know what I mean? Very humbling place. Love that. All right, so this has been kind of a short jaunt through the woods. Not a ton of mushrooms to look at in this little area anyways, but, but there's still some interesting mushrooms and forageable ones like the, uh, the oyster mushrooms and the ro rosy oysterlings that can be decent edibles out here this time of year. So happy to be down here on the Oregon coast, just spending some time with my wife and um, foraging for a little bit of mushrooms out here in the woods. So thanks for joining me on this short walk into the beautiful forest here of the Oregon coast. This was just kind of a stop along the way. So um, thanks for hitting subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode of Mushroom Wonderland from the Oregon coast. Much love everyone. Peace out.